the cinema well residents wanted to destroy the the, the cinema instead of making it become a black market place for African people and then they, they tried to burn the building and after that uh, police actually um, stopped the car with another tax and, and, and kind of beat the driver up. Black woman intervened on of our sisters and she was punching them out and that was what kicked off that uprising. The school I used to go to with the majority of the early part of the band members like Afonso Martin and Mike O'Reilly, the former members and you know, it was a predominantly um, black attended school, black and Asians. And while on the other side it was completely opposite, that side there is what you call Hansworth Grammar School, where everybody was white. <laughs> so I'm saying, and there was always that racial um, tension and racial conflicts that was happening between the older children of the grammar school and and us, the, you know, the smaller black youths from parents had just arrived in England from the Caribbean and, and um, Asia, like India and Pakistan. Along here, these were the streets where we used to play football as kids. It looks nothing like how it was when I was a kid now. And believe me, you know, we used to have, um, we used to use the lampposts as a goalpost. And you could see um, that gate, that building there is actually where I used to live. See that building, a white building there, it says no parking. That used to be the actual garage door we used to use as a goalpost. This is the actual house, number 16 Linwood Road. That's where Steel Pulse actually started at number 16 Linwood Road. <laughs> it was, it, this one coming like yeah, a reunion. Yeah, for real. So for right real. outside here. I see, we just I see the same as We've been back here together as a band since what? It's been like 20, 20 years. years. Man. 20 years we've been in town, man. 20 years. Donovan said for you, look, because he still sings here. He sings here still, yeah. Donovan. The only difference is we no longer own this place, so, yeah, you know so what I mean? We still, we still own it. Yeah. We've just talked to him down about it. One of the first songs we wrote it was, a collection of, it was a collection of songs, but one of the first ones was Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think Ku uh, uh, Klux Klan, ever, Soldiers. Everybody wants to be an attitude. Yeah, that was one of them too, but first recognized and there was a track called Naya Love. Our music, I'd say, is, has been didactic. You know, it's been there to teach, it's been there to enlighten, it's been there to make people ponder on their predicaments. The, you know, it's um, social or whether it's political, whether it involves them as a people in one environment or a collection of environments. And, you know, that's how our music has been from the beginning. And I think that's how our music has been, you know, throughout, you know, the, the, the longevity of our career. Colorado, do you want more? Massacre.
Here comes Rasta man. Abacadabra, catch me if you can. Who says I'm me? Here comes Rasta man. Abacadabra, catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me. Our inspiration, our sound, we get that from everyday life. What, ha what, what we see happens around us, what we see that happens to other people, what other people relate to us in stories of their own personal experiences in life. Yeah, this crowd of people, because I'm Manuel Vex, he just have to pick up my chest because the taxi driver and respect. What time to catch bus, hop truck, ride bike, stand up on the road and the chai bus my hand. Them the things can't go on because Nike just say, what? You say, ride the star. A taxi driver. Driver. No one stop for me. Stop for me. Whenever I flag him down, he won't stop for me. Yeah, not stop him. A taxi driver. Driver. No one stop for my ass. Stop for me. Oh, no. Whenever I flag him down, he won't stop for me. Yeah. Not stop him. Just in a London city and in a New York, there are no go. After that, some muggers on the street, a deep in the park, a drums on the sidewalk, a game of skylight. So some might catch taxi and the reach their spot, right? Pretend to play the fair and then they just run off. Okay. Some might with the driver, say the fair ain't right. The next thing you know, they got a kitchen knife. See the taxi cab driver, never stop for me. I got all kind of excuses at my slave. Some side walk cutie, some side I'm not free. The taxi cab driver, never stop for me. Because I'm a dealer. There's music around everywhere, you know, the beats, the drums, I hear the children singing, I hear people, you know, I hear the music all over, so um, it always inspires me, you know, the, the, the birds, the, the sound of just Africa, it's, you know, it's in your head, you know, so it, it can't help but inspire other things and influence things that you do in the future, you know. We live with the sound, we live within the sound, everything we see, everything we touch generates sound. And we're trying to use that sound and incorporate it in what we're doing in our music. So it, it's like, okay, you know somebody lives near the ocean. It's like giving them the ocean so they know where they are, what they are. Oh, that reminds me of where I was. If you can produce a sound that will remind people of who they are, what they are, and where they're from, a lot of people will appreciate that because it's something for them to hold on to. Yes. Thank you, my yeah, Thank you, brother. That's Yeah, because it's a sound, sound from Sunday tank is Interpretation. Yeah, every time. But what we've been preaching about 
five, ten years ago, as Steve Paul hasn't changed. So in terms of that, the movement hasn't changed. We just, it's just like a self-fulfillment, which I think the Father just revealed to us at this moment, you know. So we're just going to keep pulling until, you know, it's time to stop and only the Father can stop us. So, you know, ain't no stopping us now. You know, we got to move, baby. It's very important, just like how when I was young, I looked upon many activists, especially black activists, as, in, as inspiration and as role models. I'm sure that, you know, many children and youths do see Steel Pulse in, in, in the same frame, in the same domain. Um, it's important that we um, say positive music and uh, produce positive um, songs for the, the children to have hope and prosperity, you know, within their each and everyone's environment. I feel like the old, uh, old spirit walk around here. Yeah, man, I feel like, you know. Who likes music? You like music? Yeah, music. Yeah, music. Who's your favorite group? Who you like? Which artist? Spice Girl. No music. Oh, no reggae music. And you said steel pop? You said steel pop? Yeah. I am the youngest one out of the group, so I am the young one. I am learning from them. I like to think that when I get as you know old as them, well, not old, but when I get as old as them, <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> when I get ad as old as them, I pass on whatever they've taught me to my younger one. I feel like a kid again. Mommy, where's my mom? That was wonderful. That was very wonderful. You know, I felt like I was in a, a, a movie, meeting you know all the kids and seeing their spirit through all the struggles that their spirit rise. You know, so wonderful and beautiful. You know, and they they come through anyway. That's that's touching for me. For the youths out there, 
Um, I would like to say 